Ato? Ato? Ayudo, bud. Okay. All right, you can go. Start with the little happy thing you'll start with. <laughs> Welcome to Oscar Wilde. This is Shannon and Ora's excellent Oscar adventure. And this is the ninth Academy Awards, 1937. And we selected best director. Best director. Um, Mr. Deeds goes Lots to Lots of nominations. Ten. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lot, we have five, five Oscar nominations. Mr. Deeds goes to town with Gary Cooper and Gene Arthur. Um, and this was, I am I supposed to, I'm supposed to do the... Tell, tell all about the story, oh, the okay. plot, okay. that sort of thing. So, um, Mr. Deeds, Gary Cooper, um, a very good looking Gary Cooper, very tall Gary Cooper. He was tall. Yeah, super tall. Um, was just a normal podunk dude. Um, a poet and you know, sold this and that in a small town. A bit eccentric. Um, in Mandrake Falls. Um, I don't remember what what state. Northeast. Oh. No, it's like northeast. It's like upstate New York or something, or Vermont or New Hampshire. Whatever it was. Um, anyway, so not important. Um, and um, some distant relative dies, and he's the uh, the simple tycoon. And he went, and he um, basically inherits I don't know, ten million. Twenty million. Twenty but million dollars. In today's dollars would be like three hundred eighty million. Yeah. Um, and so they bring him back to the city, to New York City, um, to take on his inheritance. And um, the attorney that's dealing with the estate really wants to find a way to take that money away from this person that has no idea what to do with money. So he's all mesmerized by big city life and, you know, how, um, I guess, obnoxious or over-the-top wealthy people live and he's not used to it and he's very simple, he likes a simple life and he kind of has a simple mind and he doesn't come across as being the smartest, you know, cat in the, in the pen or whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, so then um, there is um, one of the attorneys um, is supposed to kind of uh, dupe him and the attorney um, comes to like him very much and ends up wanting to protect him. Not the main attorney, but one of the attorneys in the office. So he's kind of a protector. And um, so he sets up uh, an editor, a writer, a female writer, Jean Arthur, um, to um, to be the damsel in distress and to be, and so she can write all of these um, articles about him that make him look like an idiot. Um, and she does start writing these articles and she uh, names him the Cinderella, Cinderella Man. Don't know what the what the whole that is about. Oh, I guess Cinderella. I mean, yeah, I guess somebody so. that comes from nothing and all of a sudden, you know, has this great wealth or magic or power or something okay. just thrust upon Magic. Yeah. Um, anyway, and so she spends a lot of time with him and he falls in love with her and she starts falling in love with him and then she feels horrible because he knows that there's some person writing all this horrible stuff about him. Of course, she's under a different name. He, she, Her name is Belle or Babe or something like that as a writer, Mary, but Mary. he calls her Mary. He, th he thinks her name is Mary, so he doesn't know it's the same person. Anyway, they, he does end up falling in love with her. She feels horrible, and um, so she quits her job. Um, but he find, he's going to ask her to marry him, and he suddenly finds out that she's the one writing the articles, and so he goes into a deep depression. He's getting ready to go back home to Mandrake Falls, and um, some guy like throws him, some off-the-street farmer throws himself into his very palatial home you know that he inherits and says you know you're all rich and you know you are using this money you don't even know what to do with this money and we're all poor and we have no food and everybody's poor out there and lo and behold he figures out that he can he can save everybody and so he's going to give I don't know 10 acres to everybody that can um 10 farm. acres and a mule yeah, ten acres of mule to um, to like I don't know thousands of families, and and if they can keep, make it work, then they get to keep it at no cost. 
Um, and so then, um, somehow he does go into that deep depression. I don't remember how. How? That's because he finds out Babe is the only lady that's been writing all these articles about him, but, you know. And she's betrayed him, and so that sends him into a deep depression. Oh, right. No, no, no. But then also, um, yeah, I guess yeah. that is yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and then somehow um, the the mean attorney, the mean head attorney of the estate, finds um, a distant relative, simple relative, and a wife, and his wife, and so they make a case that they are the first people that actually should be getting this money rather than. Um, Mr. Deeds, and so, and he's in such a funk and such a depression, and he's not speaking that he it's all happening him around him, and he finds himself in court, and he's not even speaking on his own behalf, and he has no attorney to help him. And so, he's about to lose everything. And Babe comes out and says, You know, you know, pleads and tells the truth about everything, and it kind of wakes him out of his depression. Um, and he suddenly gets smart and he becomes his own defense and drills all these holes in the case and, and wins the case, right? And then all of the people get all of their money um, and he gives away everything. And then they fall in love or then they claim their love and that's the end. Yeah, that's, that's um, about it. Yeah. It wasn't High Noon. This is not the Gary Cooper that you'll see later on in High Noon by any stretch of the imagination. No, I mean, you know, it, it makes you feel like he's kind of an idiot. Um, but the thing is, um, they, I don't think they're trying to portray him as an idiot. I think they're trying to go ahead and show, and this is one of the common themes you see throughout American literature and, and American movies even to this day. You have big city people, and big city people are real educated, and they're smart, and they know how to play the game, and they can go through the rat That's race. True. And then you have a simple person that just kind of cuts through everything to the very simple, basic, honest truth. And that person, of course, does well in the movie, and they, they do well in the story, and they do well in this environment. You know, and I, I think it's a very common theme. It's almost what you see in politics today to a certain extent. Well, um, and it does does take place, you know, around the depression. So it does take a serious issue and puts it into a movie. Yeah, right? because you have, I mean, this is late, what, 37, and it's awarded in 38. And so you're at the end of the Great Depression. You have the Dust Bowl going on in real life. And so people want to escape. And, you know, this is a really fun thing for people to see. Um, somebody suddenly gets all this money. and he Gives it all away. Gives it all away. And, you know, everybody lives happily ever after. And people were looking for escape during this time. Um, it was one of the very negative times in this country. Um, and so that's a kind of one of the second recurring themes. So you have the honest, simple person that just sees things at a very base and simple, honest level against big city corporate life. And then you also have, you know, the Cinderella story. Right, actually that's true. Um, so this is a code movie, of course. Um, and what did you see that was very code-ish? Um, what I mentioned today mm -hmm. was that, you know, they have this like intense love, but you don't really see any chemistry of love. You don't see any acts of love. Even at the end when they kiss, finally kiss, it's like two pursed, closed lips kissing like that. Yeah. And it was, um, and, you know, it's suddenly like, my love, my honey, uh, and it was just like, it is so not lovey. It, did, um, it didn't really work. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they try to follow, you know, what you would see as the classic uh, two-hour romance. It's supposed to be a, like a romantic love, you know, a, a yeah, comedy because, or something. I don't know. It wasn't any of that. Um, no, they, they try to follow the formula where, you know, a couple meets and they have this interaction. In this case, there wasn't the chemistry. And then the, the big bad thing happens and the couple's on the outs. And then at the end, they get back together again. But yeah, Gary Cooper, um, what's her name? Jean Arthur. Jean it was Arthur. her first, she's a very, yeah. very big actress at the time, um, her first feature film. Um, and during the rebuttal, when he actually wakes out of his depression, um, he talks about how the psychiatrist that called him manic depressive or bipolar um, was doodling on his page, and he was doodling. Like that. Yeah, he was doodling pictures of, um, I think the the judge or something, 
And so um, Gary Cooper uses that word as a verb and it was actually not a word that was in the dictionary yet and it actually got added to the dictionary as a result of this film. So between that and the fact that Jean Arthur, um, this was her first feature film, um, I think those are the notable things, but mm -hmm. it was remade. Oh, with Adam Sandler and Wendell Miller Ryder in, what was it, 2002? Yeah, yeah. And actually I think they did a much better job in 2002, <laughs> even though Adam Sandler's not, well back then wasn't considered a serious actor, although you know lately that's changed. But yeah, no, I think the romance in the second Mr. D's worked and the story worked, and but you know it was 1992 or right. no 2002, so right, right, right. And of these films, you know, we're trying to see which ones that we really like, and it always goes back to one that we really, really did like. But we're watching the progression of cinema, yeah. cinema right? right? You know, and That's also going through tough times, and we don't have color yet, and you know, so we're just developing. But would we watch this film? if we knew nothing better or had nothing to do. Um, yeah, probably not. No. <laughs> I would say probably not. No. It did win Best Director. Um, it was also not nominated for Best Actor, can't see how. Um, best Film, can't see how. Best... Um, well, I think best. the competition was limited back then. Right. Best Story or something. Um, yeah, competition was limited. So anyway, so our next film is um, the 10th Academy Awards. So we're finally getting to our 10th film. And um, I don't even, it was the, the Life of Emile Zola. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and that'll be um, 1938. So until then. Bye-bye.